Here's it from the beginning. New game. First of all, I want to say, I was going to say, I want to make sure I don't actually delete my two characters I'm working on right now. Uh, we're going to create a new character. So we, I've got maximum amount of characters at any one time, obviously, from doing this. Uh, so I have to delete one. Uh, we start with the bandit because of the bandit starting stats are just closer to what we actually need. Um, um, in order to use um, the weapons that we use in the run. Also, side note, the bandit's bow makes it so much easier to do the strat um, to use sleep arrows on Godskin Duo because um, the smaller bow that the bandit starts with actually fires faster. Like, it's got a faster draw time. So you, can, you actually can just instantly fire a bow. Whereas like a long bow, you know, it takes a little bit more time. It goes like, eh, and then, but whereas it's almost instant with this bow, which allows you to just dodge and instantly get an arrow off. And the way sleep works is like, you can put something to sleep in three arrows if you just get them in close succession. Um, And then once you've done one sleep arrow, if the sleep meter fills, it'll put it to sleep. But every time you're not attacking, it's draining, right? So it, it actually works better because it's you put people to sleep better the faster you can fire arrows and this bow is actually faster so that's also a side note also something about the bandit is the knife causes bleed which for the noble fight the big fat guy in the church that we kill with the ai break which will you'll see later obviously um we're not leveled up at that point and we don't and, our weapon's not leveled up either. So even though he doesn't kill us, right? It would actually take ages just with a, a standard weapon to kill him because his health's so big. But bleed, once you've done a certain amount of hits and filled up the bleed meter, it will take a fixed percentage of health off the enemy. That's how bleed damage works in the game. So starting with a class that has a bleed weapon also allows us to kill Noble much much faster than with any other normal weapon um we choose fanged imp ashes as our keepsake that means we start with the ash to summon the thing fanged imp imp ashes and the reason for that is we literally choose that right at the start for something right at the end on the final phase of the final boss which is elden beast if you summon um fanged imp ashes just as you kill radagon so for anyone that doesn't know the final boss again i'm just explaining everyone i know if any any elder Ring people will be like yeah i know guys but obviously there's loads of people that just watch valheim in the chat that don't know about elder ring run so i'm trying to explain everything in this run so for anyone that doesn't know, the way the final boss in this game works is it's two bosses back to back. Radagon and Elden Beast. Okay? Once you kill Radagon, there's like a little bit of an animation where he's dying. And once that's over, it triggers a cutscene and Elden Beast comes. Once you kill Radagon, if you summon Banged Imp Ashes during that animation, and then Elden Beast comes... The fanged ink ashes are still there. And there's actually a glitch in the game that is actually random. This is completely random, not skill. For some reason, if the Elden Beast just happens to kill only one of the imps at the start of the fight, it actually breaks his AI and he will just stand there. Um... Now, there's some moves you can do that cause him to go back to normal. But if you just keep doing attacks and not doing, going for crits, Elden Beast will just stand there. And that's how we're actually able to kill the final boss in the game. So that's why we choose Fanged Imp Ashes. I suppose we can talk about that a little bit later on. Something else you should know is we, we have a timer that starts automatically when the game starts. And this time, this game actually goes off in game time so elden rings always uh valheim's always real time 
which means that we just start a timer and it includes load screens in game time doesn't include load screens and stuff. So our time is just whatever it says on the in-game timer, which is pretty much what you see on the screen, right? And the reason why that's relevant is that's actually why we quit out on these big doors. These big doors, the animation takes a long time to actually open the door, but because the speed of the speedrun is only counted in-game time without load screens, um, then it's it means it's faster to log out because if you log out and log back in as you start that door animation when you log back in um the door is now open it, it skips the animation essentially um the reason i just unequipped that stuff oh so here the, this part of the game, the game only starts if you die to this boss. Um, so jumping down in that specific spot times it so you're, he spawns in just before you die. Um, you have to do it in that specific spot, otherwise you die before he appears and you just respawn right at the beginning. So that's why we we die there. We, it basically triggers him to spawn in just before we hit the death box. And then we hit the death box and it progresses us. Um, so that was another relog anyway to skip the time it takes. Um, for the door. And then now, this is just a, something personal, not essential. I put the ashes in my pouch and then i'm looking northwest because that's the direction we need to be in for the door just to jump up the last little bit of the elevator all right this commentary is going to be intense to tell you explain everything as i do i can already tell but at least we have a little bit of downtime right now <laughs> because now we just have to walk to the next grace so there's nothing to explain here we just try and take a good line so I'm trying to think if there's anything else I should talk about during this time that might require a little bit more explanation. Um, oh yeah, so the reason why I unequipped the bow uh, and the arrows. The arrows I just unequipped because I prefer to have sleep arrows in uh, the R1 slot. Because that first slot is for R1 and the second slot is for R2. Which determines what button you press when you're using the bow. So that's the only reason I equip the arrows. And also we, we just don't use them. So it's fine. Um, the reason I only equip the bow though. Is because. Um, having an empty shield slot. Allows us to time. Um, the AI break. Uh, fog wall clip. Faster. For Noble. Which. Which I'll, I'll remind you what that is later on. So here we rest at the grace, which triggers the cutscene for Melina. So I'm spam spamming buttons to skip the cutscene. And then I'm spamming buttons again to clip through the dialogue. I'm also spamming, I spam A and Y at this point. Skip dialogue and to accept what she says. So now I go to my pouch, I equip torrent and then I use it so I don't have to summon torrent and then equip it with the pouch later um so now we're on torrent something to note torrent is the name of our horse to anyone that doesn't know it's actually faster if we spam the dash button there's a dash button which is the same as, as the sprint button um and Hitting dash is actually faster than just holding sprint. We activate this side of grace. Because we use it for a wrong warp glitch. Later on. So anyway, at first people thought it was faster just to keep spamming dash, by the way. Um, and it is faster than holding down sprint. But you, it turns out you only actually have to press dash every few seconds to maintain speed. So you press dash and then hold it. 
we we uh, save a few seconds here. I don't think I did that right. Oh, I did. By uh, doing this crazy uh, horse parkour. That that's just people just call it horse parkour for the lols, I guess. <laughs> but that saves a few seconds. I'm just jumping over a gap, you're not supposed to jump. We've got some more horse horse parkour. Especially skips quite a large chunk of time. This next one coming up. Right here. The whole sparkle is not as easy as it looks. If you mess it up, you do die. But th that one saves quite a lot of time, actually. Um, several seconds, if not a minute plus. Okay, so this, we activate this. To do our first wrong walk. I'll concentrate a little bit just to pull this off and then I'll explain it afterwards. Okay, so what just happened is that was a successful wrong walk. So we activated this checkpoint here on the hot highway, right? We use the dark sign to kill ourselves, which returns us to the last checkpoint, uh, which is the highway that we just activated. And then in the middle of the animation, we fast travel to Storm Hill Shack, which is the first checkpoint we activated. You know when I said we're going to use it later? You are maidenless. Uh, we fast travel to that one mid dark sign. And basically, the first time you fast travel to Storm Hill Shack, you actually spawn in out of bounds for some reason. Don't ask me why. You just do. We activate this, by the way. Just to come back to later. More horse parkour. <laughs> Fucking failed that. Again, for some some reason, even though we survived for so long before it killed me. So anyway, yeah, we we uh, fast traveled to Storm Hill Shack. Um, mid dark sign, we appear out of bounds, and then we relog when we're out of bounds. And whenever you relog out of the out of bounds, the game will put you somewhere else where it thinks you should be. And so doing it at that point saves several seconds. You know, I, I, it's not a ton of time, that first run walk, but it saves a little bit of time. Um, I think it's maybe six, seven seconds, something like that. And that just makes us appear closer to that teleporter and that teleporter takes us to the bridge we're just on. We activate that sign of grace because we want to come back to that bridge, of course, because that gate is locked. And then we just do the horse park off the left side of the bridge. To head this way. So that we go to these rocks here, which is where we collect the gate key. So this key here opens um, the gate at the end of the bridge. So that's what we do there. Um, so now we're heading to four belfries. Which are these towers on this hill. Kind of an iconic part of the game. I'm still making sure every few seconds I spam dash on torrent. Tried to manage my stamina a little bit as well. Not much to talk about except the fact just trying to get good lines here. I always... It's Experiment a little bit with flying, so I feel like this is faster. These little jumps and stuff. Don't feel like you'll probably have jumped over a corner there or something to save a bit of time. Um, so anyway, this next sight of grace we need for another run warp. And we also collect the key in this chest. This 
uh, imbued sword key just allows you to uh, activate the teleporter that we're about to use. Uh, so this sight of grace is required for the next run warp. Basically, for the kind of run warps that we do in this run, you need to have two sites of grace, specific sites of grace active, and you need to be sort of dying at one and uh, pointing to another mid animation. So we need that one active. And that key opens this portal, which takes us to Azula. And this is supposed to be a sneak peek. You can't really go actually to real Faramazula, which Faramazula is a late part of the game. And uh, we do the dark sign and try and teleport mid animation here. Um, to do another wrong warp. And we looks like we might have to do this one first time as well. Um, so Faramazula is one of the last parts of the game. This skips us all the way to, to the end of the game, basically. Or one of the, the second to last part of the game. Um, where we portal to is supposed to just be a sneak peek. But by wrong warp in there. It actually skips us to real Faramazula. Um, I just collected those runes because we need to use them later on. This specific line basically makes all these enemies useless, which is kind of amazing. I recently learned that. This guy's sketch, though. Oh, we so RNG this enemy. A lot of really good runners just relog here because they don't want to risk it. But there's no need to relog. Um, I just roll the dice. Honestly, I feel like there's a line that you can take that he never gets you. That's sort of what I'm working on for that bit. I think I just did it. But I don't know. He's very RNG, that guy. Um, so here you can see I keep randomly crouching. It's because... Because an enemy has been aggroed. And so in this game, out of combat, you don't use stamina to sprint. But when you're in combat, it uses stamina to sprint. And so, when you're about to run out of stamina, if you crouch and stand back up again instantaneously, you actually refill stamina faster. Um, then Now we just collected the hero's rune. You just saw us use that on the last run. Should no! How? That's just completely RNG with the fucking lightning. I can't believe that just happened. Oh, we don't rest here. What am I doing? Well, that's unfortunate. But I guess I'll carry on the run so that I can explain it all. And then on the next run, we can just concentrate a bit better. Um, so anyway, if you die in Faramazula, you have to do the run warp again. Unless you've activated a grace. Um, so... For the realm warp to farm Azula to work, you have to have activated Stormhill Shack and you have to have activated or rested at this site of grace. So if you fail it, you have to rest at this site of grace again um, to reactivate the glitch because the glitch just gets cancelled out and, and kind of it fixes itself um, otherwise. So you have to rest at that Belfry site of grace to reset it up. Um, but unfortunately, the first time you rest at a site of grace, it triggers a cutscene with Melania. Um, so we just have to talk to her and decline her invite to roundtable hold. Luckily, I pulled it off first try again.
Um, if I was playing it really safe, I would just rest at Graces in here. But I never usually die in Faramazula before we get to the Dragon Temple Grace anymore. That was kind of... One of the things that actually is insane about Faramazula is those that red lightning. The red lightning is so fucking random where it can appear. It can just come out of nowhere and instantly kill you. It kind of sucks. It was easily avoidable. I could have just kept rolling on that enemy, but I felt like... He'd stop chasing us. And which he did, but that lightning attack still got us, unfortunately. Uh, so sometimes I, I crouch a little bit prematurely. Um, sometimes it's. Just, you know. Just random. Other times it's because I'm anticipating maybe needing more stamina. Oh, we already got this. See, this is just force of habit now. Right, so this is a bit where I'll crouch or lock, so I want to make sure I have... I mean, it's probably worth just always doing a lot of rolls there. Anyway, now we collect this Miner's Bell. Miner's Bells allow you to buy new weapon upgrades um from the trader at round table so that specific miner's bell is what will allow us to buy the weapon upgrade material which is those somber stones um to get the buddy healers to plus nine so you, when you see us pick something up you'll notice it's pretty much always a somber smithing stone and it's, that's because we use it to upgrade the buddy healers to plus nine so here, we activate this grace for Godskin Duo, but we can't teleport here. Um, because enemies are aggroed, so we re-log to de-aggro the enemies, and then we can teleport. You are maidenless. Um, so we activate that side of grace, because... That's where we fight Godskin Duo. Now we go through this door that we got the key for. And then we activate the Sight of Grace right at the door because we want to fast travel back to the top of the hill. So that's why we activate that because we want to come back here. And uh, now, this is the rune that we got off that little salt, that dead enemy on the uh, on the ledge at the start of Azula. And that gives us um, just enough runes to buy 20 sleep arrows which is the maximum you can buy from this guy and now we just fast travel to the top of the hill which is faster because we don't count load screens and then now we do the pegasus glitch so i need to concentrate a little bit to pull this off but like i said you need to re-log mid-air as you jump off the horse. I'm just teleporting back to reset my position. Because I, I fucked it up. I really need to concentrate to pull this one off. It's really hard to relog fast enough to do it before you hit the ground.
That should have been it. Yeah, so you got to get all the way to the quit out option. So, so what you do is you, you run with Torrent, right? And then you, you press the crouch button to jump off the horse. So you need to be running with the horse because otherwise you just step off it. You want to do the animation where you jump off the horse. So you run with the horse, jump off it, and then you need to relog before you hit the ground. And that makes it so Torrent is just standing next to you. Which is not supposed to be possible. It's a glitch. Then if we fall off in a specific spot. Basically this spot is a spot where there's not room for Torrent. And we relog midair. So we relog just before we die. Midair. And because there's not room for Torrent. It's going to try and place Torrent on the ledge. Which is next to us because of the last glitch we did. But because there's no room for him, he's just going to be falling off. And then we consume an Estus to spawn him in. And now, for whatever reason, Torrent just has no gravity. So we can fly with the horse. And now we're officially out of bounds. And all of this you're not supposed to be able to get to. So you can just, that's why you can go through these walls. And that allows us to get to this part of Ray Lucaria. With the elevators. So we jump off the horse right away. I do personally. to Just so we get the timing right to catch the first elevator. And uh, by dropping down to this area. You find the specific virgin abductor. Which is the name of this enemy. We need to block so he doesn't kill us. And this specific virgin abductor, the way these things cap kill you is by grabbing you and, and just crushing you. But this isn't a glitch. This is a feature. This is programmed by the developers. If this specific one in this location eats you, it, you actually wake up in Volcano Manor. So that skips a huge part of the game as well. And now we jump off here into the lava. And we heal through the lava so we can uh, survive the drop, which allows us to skip another area, another chunk of the area. Um, I'm just healing here just to make sure we don't die. It's not really necessary. Honestly, healing here probably does nothing. I think everything could one shot us in this area anyway. Um, and we're taking this route. Just to get another somber stone. Again, that will be to level up the healers to plus nine. Uh, so, yeah, you need you need nine somber smithing stones to upgrade to plus nine. That's how it works with special weapons. Uh, we use our shield here to defend against this enemy because it, it its attack animation is completely insane. I jump here so I can activate sprint without jumping off the elevator. So we're ready to jump over that little ledge. And here's where we swap over to just having the knife. So that we could have collected a number, somber smithing stone. Dodge this guy. Um, and then here, this is the boss fight. So we listen to the sound of him spawning in. And what logging out does when a boss spawns in is it'll automatically put you outside. So the first time, a lot of the time in the game, right? When you enter a boss room, sometimes there's no fog gate. Um, but like if you die and then try again, there will be a fog gate there at the door. So quitting out just places you back on the other side of the fog gate. Um, this applies for all bosses. And then this is where we do the glitch to break this AI. So in all, the way this glitch works is you need to be standing in a very specific sp position in order to get the glitch to work. Now, this is why we don't have a a, 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 a slot in uh, our second slot after the shield. This move set, back step, wait for the end of it, and then this move that you do when you don't have a shield in your left hand 
just happens by sheer coincidence to put you in the right position to put, pull off the glitch. Which is absolutely an, an amazing coincidence that just allows you to pull the glitch off a little bit faster. And then you have to wait five seconds. Um, once, you, once you go through. Um, because if you go through any faster than that. Um, the boss will actually aggro. Uh, and kill, kill you. So basically the way that glitch works. Is. You, you want to traverse the fog gate. At the furthest possible. Uh, spot that you can stand. So you, you traverse through it. Standing as far back as it lets you. Okay. So the traditional way to set up that glitch. Is to use a bow. And just aim at the gate. And you can actually see where it says. Uh, press Y to traverse. Right. And if you just back up. And then slowly move towards it. You'll see it pop up. And you can use the bow to aim yourself in the right spot and gradually move closer and closer oh, tiny micro movements until until it just pops up so you're standing as far away as humanly possible and what that does is it means that you're not standing on the stairs but you are supposed to be standing on the stairs okay um and so it, it the stairs make you clip because it's pushing you over them um, and that clips us in basically you're standing in the middle of the fog gate instead of on the other side of it. And it's the fog gate that triggers the boss's AI. Um, and like I said, if you, you are maidenless, um, you have to wait five seconds after the clip because if you go in right away, he aggroes and that allows us to fight the boss. With no AI. Um, then that's normally when we would first rest. Uh, and, and talk to Melania. Um, and she takes us to round table hold. We give the bell bearing to the trader. So then we can buy the smithing stone. Uh, that we needed to upgrade. And we also buy the bell. That allows us to summon the imps for the last boss. And we buy the scimitar just because it's a cheap sword. That allows us to have war cry on it. Alright. Now we fast travel to Stormhill you Shack again. This. And we go to the NPC that sells war cry. Um sign note equip the scimitar. And the uh, Godskin, sti Godskin Stitcher. Um, because when you go to equip Ashes or upgrade a weapon. It opens on the weapons that you currently have equipped. So it's faster if you already have them equipped. Um, so you have to say you, the first dialogue option to this guy. To allow him to sell you stuff. And then we buy Warcry. Can we go back you are maidenless. Um, to round table and we level up and equip the Ash of War. So we want 16 figure, which basically just makes it so we're not one shot uh, in Godskin Duo, I believe. And uh, everything else is uh, just about being able to use the Bloody Helis. Um, we use our seed. That we got from the gate front at the beginning of the game. Which allows us to have another Estus. And we just reallocate that new Estus. Onto the magic Estus. Because um, we need to use more magic later on. And then. Um, we use the blacksmith. To equip an Ash of War. Because we don't have the whetstone. So we have to use a blacksmith to do it. And then uh, we do another wrong warp. And this one skips the part of Volcano Manor after Noble. Um, 
So it, it takes us to Mount Gelmir earlier. So Vol Volcano Manor is where we just defeat Noble. No, are you fucking kidding me? I shouldn't talk through parkour ever. I hope someone's getting something out of this commentary. Because <laughs> it's definitely fucking me up. So yeah, normally after you do... So yeah, I'll explain it now we're here. Normally, after you kill Noble... You go up this elevator and you have to do like a whole part of exploration to eventually get to a portal that teleports you to Mount Gelmir. Um, so this wrong warp. Um, just skips that portion of Volcano Manor. Um, to reset up this round warp, you just have to rest at the at the table at round table hold because that's classed as the grace there. Um, and anyway, this uh... this bit of parkour, which I don't, that's the first time I messed that up in so long. Um, just skips a few seconds of running down the mountain. Now, obviously, my PB is still bad. So I'm still practicing, still getting better. So all these little techniques that just save us a few seconds, if I just wanted to PB, it'd be easier to just not do them. But I actually want to get a good time. So I don't necessarily care about just be being for the sake of it right now because I feel perfectly capable of actually getting a, a, like a top time at, at the minute um, so which is why I'm just committing to, to all of the the strats that save time um, because it's just a matter of time till we get a run where we pull it all off first try which we'll try and go for after this run um so all of this, th this is actually probably, this part here is honestly why I can potentially see um, the current patch route changing eventually. Because all of this travel right here is just to get the bloody Helis. Now, it's still fast. Obviously. Compared to a normal run, but... You know, this is summit. This all this time here, being able to skip it would be nice. But for current known strats, you know how good the buddy Helis is with the insta staggers and stuff, and the fact that you can do an AI break, you can kill Radagon with the AI break with it, makes it worth it. So for this boss fight, we just do three jumping attacks in a row to uh, stagger him and then we crit him and we rinse and repeat that. And this is actually from Godskin Noble. This is Godskin Noble's weapon that we got just from killing him. Um, it just so happens that does enough damage to the guard meter to be able to pull this off for this boss in particular. This boss can be a bitch for any runner of this category. But if you just stick to the strat of three jumping R2s can do in one shot like that which is awesome that we got that one shot this time on this commentary run through and now we have bloody healers we go back to the south gate
And now we go to the giant old codger to upgrade the bloody healers. And I still can't do this jump consistently. <laughs> right, we need to make sure we always collect these runes when we die doing this because I do need them. All right, that was actually how it's supposed to be done. So whatever position I did it in there, I need to try and do it at that every time. So now we click the bloody Helis. And uh, use the hero's rune from Azula. We equip the Helis because it's faster to upgrade if you have it equipped. And obviously we use the runes because we need the money to buy the rest of the upgrade materials. And then to pay to get it upgrade. uh, upgraded. And we do the upgrades at the old codger because we still need to buy um, the rest of the somber stones off him. You can pay the blacksmith to upgrade also in the normal game. But we just do it here so we can do it all at once because we still need to come to this guy to buy somber stones anyway. Well, I presume Which these are the lower level. Thomas the stones. Which is why we don't start grading until later. And then we go back to Dragon Temple. And we attempt to kill Goskin Duo using sleep arrows. So it uh, saves a little bit of time. Usually a fog gate appears here. Uh, you know, if you've died to Godskin Duo before. But you can actually jump over this balcony for the first time. So the first guy is self-explanatory. You need to concentrate on this guy because if you fuck this up, it's a dead run. Well, for this guy, I'm doing this specific weird movement. Try and bait him to attack. Because this guy instantly dodges arrows. 90% of the time. Um, but if you counter him when he attacks, you can hit him. Now we war cry. R2. Crit. And then R2 again. War cry. Two hand. R2. R2 again. Well. War cry. Two hand. R2. Crit. Crit. No, we didn't get the crit. So now we have to R2. War cry. Another R2. And we did it. <clears throat> okay. Uh, 
Uh, now we just go for all arcane for the rest of the run. There's one thing I really like about this route because you're always one hit basically for the rest of the run. Uh, but arcane increases the, uh, the rate at which your bleed damage is increased. Um, yikes. Uh, I jumped on that little bit of ledge, a little bit of parkour there to save a few seconds. Uh, most runners actually relog when you land so you don't get hit in the back there. Um, in fact, that relog's actually where I normally split. I just forgot to do the relog. Um, I'll waste a little bit of time to get this drop right. Um, we collect this talisman because it's basically just free to get. It costs no time to get really and it increases your defense. What's up PK? Thanks for stopping by. Hope you're doing good. Welcome back. Glad you better. What video was great. Oh, thanks so much, dude. It's good to be back. I'm hyped to be back stream, and I really miss you guys. I'm glad you enjoyed the video, dude. Thanks for watching it. Right, so I'm picking this up, Sight of Grace up, guys, because these bird enemies are absolutely brutal. You can kind of jump around this ledge here to save a little bit of time. Uh, I jump here as late as possible and then the poster instantly reload there but I kind of scuffed that up and that's just to get the the birds to despawn because these birds pursue you so aggressively so what we're doing right now PK or anyone else that's joined mid run is because I normally speed run Valheim we've got a lot of people that don't know what's going on on an Elden Ring run so I'm doing a run where I actually explain everything that I'm doing. Um, so I'm relocking right now just to the aggro birds again because I'm low health and these birds are so bad. It's honestly not really worth stopping to heal because they can instantly kill me anyway. Um, I'm just going to spam relogs here because we kind of messed this up. You want the timing of this to be as such that you kind of like run up to a certain point and then relog. But because I didn't have quite enough stamina, um, I didn't run far enough. So we're going to have to do extra re relogs. Nice. I'm glad to appreciate the commentary. That's awesome, dude. Oh. Oh. See what I mean about lightning and... Baramazula like that could actually instantly just killed me potentially I'm actually gonna heal now you're welcome yeah I, I always like to try and do commentary for everything that I do on stream it's just sometimes when you're speedrunning it some it some games are just it harder I can't believe that I died to this guy. That honestly never happens. Um, I don't know what that was about. Well, I like some games are just hard. Like there's so much going. Oh my god! You see what I mean? I think I'm explaining it myself. Like sometimes games, are, the runs are so complicated. That it's actually hard to commentate everything. So I guess it's good to just do occasionally do a run where we commentate everything and then do other runs where we're a bit more concentrated. Well, let's see if we can do the reloads better. Honestly, I don't know what I'm supposed to do when I have a fucking RNG wall of thunder in my face. Um. I 
That was better. We keep getting the thunder right on us. But the lightning, sorry, not the thunder. Yeah, we avoided it. No, we didn't. <laughs> I thought we lost it anyway. The birds are just so intense. Alright, so basically... You normally... I would normally do two relogs. One after I landed, and then one about here. Um, just so I can jump up here, and then the dragon kills the birds anyway. So that's how it should go. You can do it with one less relog, but it's just sketch, I don't know. I think pretty much every runner or every Eldarin player finds those guys sketch. What? What is with this guy? He's just on freaking steroids or something. He's never that much of a pain. Alright, that guy is usually a pain. Which is why I pre-roll. But there's always a little bit of RNG with AI in these games, but typically the AI will do a specific thing when you stand in a specific position. I just did that to refill health and Estus and stuff. Not really necessary, but... Alright, so for Malaketh... Malaketh has two phases. Clergyman and Malaketh. For Clergyman, we war cry. And we just time our R2 correctly. If we do it just as he attacks with a jump attack and we got the bad RNG. I actually think I ran too far up to him. So there's a little bit of RNG, like I said, with what AI does, but typically, like, if you, it always does the same thing when you're in the same spot most of the time. So what we want is, when clergyman does his jump attack, we start, we 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 start our our, our, our two attack. So we want to war cry. And then do our R2 just as he does our jump attack. And we just tank the attack. And it instantly staggers him. And then we crit. And then we uh, R2 again. And then that spawns Malaketh. And then we move a tiny bit. War cry, dodge, and then we R2 again, and that 
uh, stuns him. We crit. And then R2 again. There we go. And then, if you wait for the ding after the boss, we can skip a huge part of this animation. You are maidenless. And now, we're just skipping cutscenes and stuff, right? But I, I change to keyboard and mouse during this load. So logging out on a boss. When a boss fight ends with a long conversation, you can always log out after it does the giant, the giant kind of like bell sound. It works on pretty much any boss that ends with a long conversation. Logging out after the giant kind of... I, I think it sounds like a bell. I don't know how else to describe it. Um, But it always skips the last part of the animation. So you save several seconds by doing that. Um, the reason we change the keyboard and mouse is because to do this next skip, um, there's a setup that uses the compass and to precisely aim at certain parts of the compass. It's just easier to do it with a mouse because you can do horizontal movements with the camera much faster, which doesn't matter at any other point of the game except for this. So this one moment in a run, pretty much every run I use is keyboard and mouse for. And I've done testing and it is just much better. So this skip here actually skips the boss fight for Gideon, who's one of the characters in the game. You want to want to go right into this nook here, and then stop sprinting, and aim east and go straight to northeast. Then go to just next to north, and then the next notch on the compass twice. Jumping at those specific spots allows you to jump over that tree branch and over this building, which has Gideon inside it, which skips Gideon. Um. Now we made it look easy there, but it's actually a nightmare and really hard to do consistently. So it's actually amazing that we just got that first try. Um, and it's not possible to do it that consistently with a controller. So now I'll be, once I rest here, I'll be skipping back to controller and we, um, level up again and we just go arcane again uh, honestly i think this level doesn't matter but i've seen i see other runners do it and we we uh reallocate I'm, I'm pretty sure neither of the next two bosses we killed to finish the run um can even take bleed damage so i don't know if arcane even does anything i could be wrong i probably am wrong uh, but then we reallocate to get one of a magic estus um, because we need to do a lot of war cries for the last boss. Um, for this, we jump on this spot and we're trying to jump around this pillar onto this ledge. It's not easy to do. Oh, that was almost it. I'm actually quite good at this now, but... I'm a bit rusty. Okay, so standing at this specific spot, if we re-log, what happens here is when we load back in, part of the gate in front of us isn't rendered right away. So I hold mostly left and up a little bit to go in the direction of that fog gate. And just for a few seconds, it's not visible. And so you have to be holding down an exact direction to clip through that fog gate. And so this is second to last boss, Godfrey. 
and this allows us to skip godfrey and walk straight into the final boss so here we war cry and then two hand and this is where i split for godfrey so now this is the last boss you are maidenless so this is hard we need to go and do a jump attack right away and then we're trying to stand on his right side and if you stand in a very specific spot it, it breaks his ai Right, I fucked it up. I don't know how much I should do commentary on the last boss here, because this is a fucking nightmare. Bas but basically, I guess I'll explain now the time has paused right here. Basically, guys, there's a weird AI glitch where if you stand on Radagon's left side, which is like shadowy side... He, he, he won't actually aggro. But the problem is, like, you know, like, certain movements and certain attacks will cause him to aggro. So what we do is we get a jump attack in, right? Then we stand in a spot where he won't aggro. And we do an R2. This needs to all be after Warcry. And that's enough to stagger him. Then we crit him. And as he stands up, we need to then Warcry during that animation and quickly get in the right position so he doesn't aggro again. And then we do a jump in attack. And then we quickly need to get in the right position again. And then we do an R2. And then we crit. And we rinse and repeat that process over and over again. Until he dies. And then as soon as he dies, we need to summon in our imps. Um, but he just aggroed. Which means that the glitch failed. So I'm actually going to quit out. Which will save time. It'll save me doing the Godfrey skip again. And we do have enough Estus to beat the game still. So I'm just going to concentrate now. Because I think I explained that enough. It's just really hard guys. Because you have to be very specific from where you stand. No! I think it's just broken for good now. Yeah, like... We, what, once he does aggro, it means that you've failed the glitch. And, and you can't do it again. You have to start the boss fight again. Right, I think I, I need to not talk in this to actually pull it off. If we're going to pull it off. Okay. So, War Cry. No! We almost did it. All right. So like I said, you just got to stand in a very specific spot and do specific attacks to get this to work. Um, but then as soon as he dies, we summon the imps. And like I said, right at the start of the run. When Elden Beast comes in, 
if right away he just kills one imp and just one imp, it causes his AI to break and he will basically just stand there. And if you do just do R2 attacks and you don't do crits, he, his AI will stay broken. And, and that's how we're able to kill him with this build. Um, whereas if we reactivate his R2 by doing uh, his AI by doing, by doing crits and stuff, um, we wouldn't be able to beat him really with this little health and this setup. Or you can, but it's not easy. Um, we're still on pace for PB, by the way. Which is pretty cool. Um, so whether or not we get the Elden Beast AI break is totally RNG. So we, we just have to, this bit is hard. The Radagon bit, this is skill. The Elden Beast bit, we need some good RNG. Can't fucking believe I, I I just need to not talk when I'm doing Radagon because it well I, I was just trying to make it clear like this bit is like the hard bit and then the next bit we just need good RNG to get it to the successful rundown so we just try our best here and then pray. Oh, I'm too rusty. I actually got to the point where I can do Radicon absolutely every single attempt first try easily. I've had a lot of practice, but I just haven't done it for a couple of weeks because I've been working on the uh, Swamp Only video. Alright, that's everything that we needed to do. Now we just pray that we get an AI break. So we just want him to kill one imp. I think we got it. No.
No, we got it. The problem is, though... Where I'm out of Estus. So, he has a lot of time to come back to life. So we can't kill him quite as fast as we're supposed to be able to if we had another Estus. So hopefully this AI break doesn't fail now. Because... Yes! Right, now we relog as the ding goes off. Let's get the animation. Then we skip the cutscene. Then we skip these cutscenes. And then this, to get the final time, right? That should officially be the final time. All right. Boom. 10 minute PB. But the, to, the official time is actually on the in-game timer. Which might be slightly different to the on-screen timer. So to get that, we now Alt F4. I'm st even though I'm hyped that we just got PB. And our first ever sub one hour. I'm still focused on giving you guys the right commentary. I hope you appreciate that. <laughs> So the official end of the run is when we hit credits. Um, and the way we get our actual final run time is by checking um, the in-game timer after you've beaten the game. And you are officially allowed to ult F4 on credits just to get it quicker because otherwise you just have to sit for a bunch of other stuff. Um, so you're officially allowed to alt F4 on credit. So now, um, we log back in and we go load game. Boom. 52 minutes and 13 seconds. My first ever sub one hour Elden Ring speed run. Now we're only 20 minutes ish from record. Hell yeah. So that's minus 10 minutes. We just PB by 10 minutes. That's absolutely hype, chat. Hell yeah. Hello, YouTube. I feel like this has to go on YouTube, especially with that commentary. Hello, YouTube. <laughs> you want to support the Elder Ring content? You can do so on Patreon. Exclamation Patreon in the chat. There's a link in the description on YouTube. I hope you enjoy this video, video if you're watching on YouTube. And uh, yeah, don't forget to leave a like and a nice positive comment for the algorithm. And uh, yeah, swing by the stream. There's links in the description.